So good morning guys. Today in this video, I'll be showing you how to operate this Rudolph Research Analytical Auto Pro 2 automatic polarimeter, which is right in front of you here. So you are seeing through my lenses. Now before you do any experiment, of course, you have your gloves, lab coat, and cover shoes ready. Now the first thing you do is you turn off the main supply switch. Okay, and the main switch for this apparatus is at the back. You see, through the wire at the back, I will not turn it because I would like it to be stable, but to the back, you've got to feel it and switch it on. Heard the sound? All right. Now this polarimeter, you have to let it stand for about half an hour to warm up. Why is that so? Because we are using laser and the laser lamp need to warm up first. If not, it won't be a stable reading. So meanwhile, I'll just guide you what are the other apparatus you need for this experiment. You notice that there are two different polarimetry cells here, the longer one, Right. It says here temperature control because we can adjust the internal temperature of the system to be 20 or 25 degrees Celsius to analyze the uh, optical rotation. Right. This is the 5cm polarimetric cell. That's the ordinary one that we'll be using later on today. And you notice a volumetric flask. Why do we need a volumetric flask? Because we need to know the exact concentration of the solute that we are measuring. And we always put this volumetric flask inside a beaker to prevent it from toppling. We will also need some syringe, small ones, to inject the sample inside. And of course, washing with our solvent. And some waste beaker for the liquid. And of course, we have the paper towel to uh, prevent any spillage. To have a clean platform here as well. Alright, so do have ready and I'll come back later on after half an hour. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Okay, so guys, now we are back. The machine has really warmed up. We can start the experiment. So you see on the screen, it says here that you got to perform zero before measurements. So we click OK and see the panel here. There's a control. The start button is now in grey. You can't click first because there's no sample cell inside the machine. Now you need to place the sample later on. Open the door, right? and place your cell inside. As mentioned just now, you have two kinds of cells. The one that's temperature control, and this is longer, 10 cm path length against the 5 cm path length cell. Okay, we can place it into the sample holder, right, all the way into the right side. Right, make sure it sits nicely and close. This is how it works later, all right? Now the thing is, there's a few things we can do here. Wavelength, we can adjust to two kinds of wavelength for this machine, either 365 nanometers or 589 nanometers. So here in this case, we are using six, uh, pardon, 589 nanometers. We set it. And if you want to, you can also set your own method, different kinds of methods. So we have one that's being saved here, but for now, we don't have to touch this. Temperature, we can also set uh, whatever temperature we would like to scan. For now, it is off. If you like to use temperature control, we can set 20 or 25 or a selected temperature here. So the machine is going to warm up to that temperature before it will scan. So back to normal. OK. And I will set it. OK. Now, we also have the temperature internally. What is the actual temperature inside? Because we know that the uh, optical rotation is temperature de de dependent. right? And in this case, you can also adjust the concentration of the solution that you had inside later, the main manual. Okay, right. You can set this measurement data. Adjust. This is what is being collected. Okay, scale. Right. Here we can key in the optical rotation, specific rotation, and the concentration of a sample. So here we do not adjust anything. But you can key in the self length, like we say, 5 cm, 10 cm, etc. Okay. So next, we will be preparing a sample. Always start with your background solvent first. So in this case, we have already prepared ethanol, and you need some of these devices here. Clean and fresh syringe. Okay. So take off some. And we'll be using this 5cm cell for our experiment, okay? Now, there are four holes here. You can choose the one with bigger opening so you can fit you can fit the syringe, okay? You push for one side, from one side, 
Okay, I'll start from here. See now, it means the curve is locked. You push it. Okay, this angle, you see, you see that? It came off. That means what? It's enough, and there's no bubbles inside. Okay, how do you check there's no bubbles? You need to look through this tiny aperture here. You see? You have to look through this hole, and then you need to rotate up and down to see that there's no air bubbles okay if there is it's not going to be good because the light ray that you scan through can be refracted so up down in this case me use my left eye to check okay there were some bubbles here so what you need to do is you see how could that happen it happened because here you see i have some bubbles so i need to eject out Okay, take out some and then make sure there's no bubbles in this range. Okay, and do that one more time. Push it in from the other side. And you see? Good. Now let's do one more check. Right, now there's no more bubbles. Okay, so right now we can do a scan first, place it into the sample holder. Close, all right. So of course we have to do zeroing. Remember, okay. Since it's all ethanol and ethanol does not have any chiral center, we should expect the reading to be zero. So let's see what happens. Start. Okay, for log identify, we just key in any initial that represent your sample. Enter. Same thing for sample identifier, all right. And you wait for a while. The control panel will say stop later. Okay. And you see a reading that indicates a specific rotation. Now, guys, you know that here they also tell you the measured optical rotation and how are these related? The specific rotation is linked by a formula. You will divide the measured optical rotation by the cell path length and the concentration. So in this case, in this case we key in the cell path length and the concentration and the machine here will tell you the specific rotation and now we are right it should be zero there's no cow center so very good so what we do now is we remove the polarimetric cell from the polarimeter okay. we should use a waste beaker here take out the liquid okay and we'll rinse it with our sample that's really prepared so we will take out using another syringe. Okay, again the same thing. Insert. Make sure there's no bubbles. Okay. Put it back. Make sure here there's no bubbles. If there's bubbles, it's not going to be nice. So inject some. Okay, now no more bubbles. We will put it through, lock it, you can see the other side here, my finger. Okay, you need some more. Let's try to take some more. Right, again, no bubbles, good. Push it in here. You see here? It come off, that means it's enough, okay? Remove it, we rinse it once right just now. So we wipe it clean. Again, check for bubbles. So again, there's no more bubbles. Perfect. Okay, if there's bubbles, do it again. Okay, all right. So, I'll place the cell inside there push to the right make sure it sits uh, the ray should go through the path if it doesn't sit properly the ray might be blocked and you do not have a good measurement close the door tightly and now we press start again same thing we identify it using a letter
Okay, the reading should come up soon. This is running there. Dun, 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 dun. Here you go. So that's the value you can take note. The specific rotation. Now suppose you know that the concentration is different from what you key in, or the previous user has seen something else and you forgot. Not to worry, you just have to refer to the measure of the rotation value, the one in the UEs. The UEs arc so we can find out using a formula to link them up to find a value, okay? So at the end of the day, what you do is it's good to do an averaging and repeating your sample into the polarimetric cell and scan and see what is the optical rotation. Right, and suppose this is the end of experiment, you would take it to the weigh speaker, right, discard your sample, and of course wash it with the solvent, in our case ethanol, a few times, inject to one side, okay, come up from the other, rinse it a few times, then place it back into the polarimeter. Okay. And make sure that your friends are not using because if they are using, recall that we take about half an hour to start the machine again. So you try to load the machine for one full day. At the end of the day, when we are done completely, we turn it off. So we will just turn it off at the back. Same thing, there's a button here next to the power cord. Okay. And you are done. So thank you for watching this video. Please be responsible and clean up after use. See you. God, I'm asking, please get up.